good afternoon. I want to welcome you all on this rainy day. We love the rains in, in moderation. But thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Uh, I'm Senator Bill Monning and represent San Luis Obispo in the 17th Senate District. I want to start by thanking the Copeland Family Foundation and French Hospital for hosting this press conference this afternoon. I want to thank members of the media and all others from the community who have joined us today. Uh, I am joined today by Assemblymember Jordan Cunningham, and we're here to announce the introduction of Senate Bill 1090, which will help mitigate the regional impacts of the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant closure. On January 11th of this year, the California Public Utilities Commission approved PG&E's request to retire Diablo by 2025, but to our disappointment, the PUC did not approve the Community Impact Mitigation Program or fully fund the Employee Retention Program, both of which are vital components to the success of the plant's retirement. Both of these programs will provide a bridge to our region as the transition to closure of Diablo Canyon moves forward. Senate Bill 1090 authorizes the CPUC to approve elements of the joint proposal that was submitted as part of the retirement application, including $85 million for Community Impact Mitigation Program. It requires full funding of the Employee Retention Program and directs the CPUC to manage its integrated resource plan to ensure that there is no increase of greenhouse gas emissions as a result of the plant's retirement. The community has assumed all the risk, while all PG&E customers have realized the benefits over the past decades. The community, including stakeholders with us today, have invested a lot of time in good faith negotiations to finalize the joint proposal. Senate Bill 1090 is designed to direct the PUC, the Public Utilities Commission, to affirm and enact the joint proposal agreed to by the parties. I mean, thank you. I'm going to turn the mic over to my friend and colleague, Assemblymember Jordan Cunningham. He and I will be navigating this through the Senate and the Assembly in Sacramento. And after Assemblymember <coughs> Cunningham, I will introduce our other speakers who flank me here today. Thank you. Please welcome Assemblymember Jordan Cunningham. Thank you all for being here, braving the weather. There are two things I'm thankful for today, among others. One is that it's raining and we're teetering into a drought, so we need it. And the other is that we have uh, representing us in the state senate a true public servant. You know, he doesn't have to do this. He really doesn't. But he is committed to the well-being of our community, the, to the central coast, to our economy. And I'm really honored to be able to partner with him on Senate Bill 1090. Uh, Diablo has been a fixture in our community and in our economy for decades. The employees that operate and secure the plant are our neighbors, our friends. They coach Little League. They volunteer in our communities. From San Miguel to Santa Maria, they make up the very fabric of what it is to live on the Central Coast. We have an opportunity with SB 1090 to ensure a smooth transition to a post-Diablo future. SB 1090 will protect our schools, our people, will protect our economy, and it will safeguard critical assets. Make no mistake, this will not be an easy bill. The Senator, myself, all of our allies in this effort are prepared to work hard, but we have a lot of work to do. We have to convince 118 other legislators that this is the necessary and proper action for the state and the governor. But like the Diablo employees have done for us for so many years, we're going to roll up our sleeves and get to work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, next, we'll present the chair of the San Luis Obispo County Board of Supervisors, Chairman John Pichon. On behalf of the San Luis Obispo County Board of Supervisors, I'm here today in support of Senate Bill 1090. 
We'd like to thank Senator Bill Monning and Assemblyman Jordan Cunningham uh, for their hard work on this legislation. SB 1090 will provide direction and authorization to the Public Utilities Commission with respect to decommissioning of Diablo Canyon. And it will minimize the economic dislocation that might otherwise occur as a result of the decommissioning in our county. The closure of Diablo Canyon will have significant ramifications on all of the County of San Luis Obispo, our school districts, and our residents. Maintaining San Luis Obispo County's more than 700 public services like law enforcement, fire protection, and road maintenance and land use planning will enable the safe and secure operation of Diablo Canyon Power Plant until its planned retirement. Supporting SB 1090 will help our community continue its efforts also to educate our young people and maintain the services of San Luis Obispo County and the services that we deliver to everybody here in this room and to our community. So with that, I'd just like to thank again our, the Senator and the Assemblyman for pushing this forward. And I know that we're gonna be successful and I'm looking forward to the signature uh, from the governor. Thank you. Well, thank you, John. And next, representing both the city of San Luis Obispo and on behalf of the coalition of cities that are all unified in supporting both the settlement proposal and Senate Bill 1090, please welcome Mayor Heidi Harmon. Thank you. Thank you so much to Senator Monning and Assemblyman Cunningham and the coalitions of cities and the county, Superintendent of San Luis Obispo Coastal School District, Dr. Eric Prater, labor groups, and PG&E for working collaboratively and tirelessly on this very important piece of legislation. This bill recognizes the community and economic impacts of the Diablo Canyon power plant closure and the importance to study how to mitigate those impacts. This bill also recognizes the importance of the funding to directly offset the community impacts from the closure and how necessary the additional economic development efforts are in the county and in the cities. San Luis Obispo County has and will continue to shoulder the risks of having a nuclear power plant in our community and we appreciate so much the efforts of both Senator Monning and Assemblyman Cunningham to put forth a bill that comprehensively addresses the complex challenges of shuttering a major nuclear power generating facility. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Herman. Uh, and now we will hear from San Luis Coastal Unified School District Superintendent. Please welcome Dr. Eric Prater. Thank you for having me today. I'd like to start by just expressing my gratitude for working with such incredible partners uh, with PG&E, with the Coalition of Cities, and the County of San Luis Obispo. Uh, I, would, I would say that uh, throughout that negotiations process in developing the SIMP agreement, uh, I learned about each organization, I learned about the leadership within those organizations, and I can tell you firsthand that they are high, high quality, empathetic leaders in this county who care deeply for us. With that said, reaching out to Assemblyman Jordan Cunningham and Senator Bill Monning, it's been a great pleasure. To know that our representatives really care about us and really take our, our needs and our relative crises seriously has been uh, something that I will always keep with me and appreciate deeply. Last week, I also had the good fortune of, of a meeting with U.S. Congressman Salud Carbajal, and he expressed his interest in helping us as well. So we are getting it from many different sources, and from my perspective as a school district superintendent, I, I have great, tremendous gratitude. San Luis Coastal Unified School District has approximately 7,500 students, where 40% of our students are socioeconomically disadvantaged. In other words, they come from families whose net income is less than $32,000 a year, and they send their kids to school. Those students that come from these families who have great and tremendous aspirations for their children also have significant needs. 
So that leads me into the $8 million loss that we will encounter when Double Canyon closes. It's about 10% of our budget. It represents approximately 110 teachers. We already have made significant reductions leading up to this of approximately $2 million. With next year, we expect to reduce another $1 million while maintaining excellent programs and services for our kids. It's sort of like a perfect storm because attached to that, we also have our PERS and our STRS increases for our employee contributions. SB 1090 gives us time to manage. We need a bridge, a longer runway to make needed changes. It allows us time to use attrition and retirements to transition this loss. And it allows us time to communicate and gather community engagement and input. This is critical because we have 16 schools from Avila to San Luis Obispo to Los Osos to Morro Bay. All of our schools are precious to us. They're, they are part of the very fabric of these small communities that we represent. We also are hopeful to establish an education foundation and this education foundation represents a ray of hope for us. The endowment for this would represent uh, much needed interest so that when we look forward to needed um, support for these programs that we will eventually lose, um, this foundation could help support those things. It's a long-term solution. The bottom line is this. SB 1090 will assist the district in managing the impacts of the Dabil Canyon closure over time, providing the needed bridge to manage the funding gap so that reductions can be implemented thoughtfully. Without the bill, students, teachers, and our community will needlessly suffer. Thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Prater. I think one of the central themes as we move this legislation will be the importance for local education and particularly uh, for the San Luis Coastal Unified School District. Um, I also want to acknowledge with us today Tom Jones representing PG&E. Uh, showing their support for this legislation and to acknowledge PG&E's sensitivity and engagement with local community stakeholders as we've moved forward in this process. Let's acknowledge and thank the President. I also want to thank the members of International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, uh, Local 1245, for being here today. Uh, you're one of the employees as we've, as the public relies on these employees, trained, skilled employees for Diablo's continued operation up to the point of closure and maintaining those operations safely. It's why the worker retention program is so critical to the ongoing safety of the operation of the plant. I want to thank those workers for their continued service, not just to Diablo Canyon, but to the broader community. Uh, with us today, we have Mr. Robert Dean with IBEW Local 1245. Bob, thank you for joining us. So I'd like to, representing the men and women of IBEW Local 1245 throughout the state, but specifically today in Diablo Canyon, we'd like to thank the Congressman, I mean, sorry, Simmelman and the <laughs> Senator for their support of 1240, or 1290, sorry. Um, so, we believe an opportunity was missed by the PUC uh, when they decided not to implement the agreement in its entirety. So this agreement both takes care of the community, the workers, and the environmental, and environmental concerns in a way that has never been done before. And it should be looked at as a model, not only in California, but nationwide, of how we can transition to a different future, whether it's we've been contacted by people running coal plants, by gas plants, and how are we gonna shut these plants down change the future, the energy future of our country, our state, and our local community while taking care of the communities, the environment, and the workers. We put a lot of hard work into finding a way to do that. People that would generally never sit down at a table together got together, came up with an agreement where all of these concerns were addressed in a fair and equitable manner. So an opportunity was missed by the PUC. Now hopefully the smart, free-thinking people will correct that problem and we can, make, and we can move forward. So we're having a refueling outage at Diablo Canyon right now. That retention agreement keeps quality workers to keep that 
to keep Diablo Canyon safe, to keep it running efficiently, and also to attract workers so they can run in a quality, safe, efficient manner until the end of its operating license. So again, I'd like to thank you, and uh, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, and all the workers, all the workforce at Diablo Canyon. Uh, our next speaker is Rochelle Becker with the Alliance for Nuclear Responsibility. The Alliance has been party to the negotiations. They played a critical role always with public safety and environmental safety at the forefront of their mission. Please welcome Rochelle Becker. a long time ago. But what we noticed was when San Onofre closed, that was a horrible, horrible thing for that community and every other community that's had sudden closures at their nuclear plants. And we have been before every oversight agency in the state of California and worked with the legislature in a bipartisan way for now close to 13 years. And it's been our privilege to work with these people because they listen to reason. And it's very important that they do so now. We have been honored to work with PG&E, the unions, NRDC, and the Union of Concerned Scientists, excuse me, and Friends of the Earth, and others in putting together the joint proposal. Our unions were right. We've never sat at the same table together. But this was a marvelous experience for all of us, and we learned a lot. And we intend to be in Sacramento on Monday, and we are going to stress the fact that we are the only community that has an annual siren event, who has emergency planning when you have to evacuate. No other community, no matter what sort of facility they have, has potassium iodide pills in case of a radioactive release. We're going to look into the faces of each legislature and say, how can you say no to the community that still retains the risk of a nuclear power plant? We believe that the workers are going to keep this plant slate until it closes. But they're not always in charge. Things happen. That's why we have these. And that's what we're going to stress starting on Monday in Sacramento. And we hope your spirit is there with us. And if you can get to Sacramento yourselves, please do so. We thank Assemblyman Cunningham. We thank Senator Monning. We thank everyone who's represented San Luis Obispo for the last dozen or so years because they've stepped up to the plate each and every time. Thank you, Rochelle. Uh, we'll open to questions in a minute. I just want to outline briefly next steps for this legislation. It will go through our normal committee process in Sacramento, starting on the Senate side, uh, going to Senate Energy Committee, uh, and then we'll have an opportunity to move it from the Senate over to the Assembly. Uh, if we're successful there, it would also go through a committee process there uh, before ending up the plan on the governor's desk. All the stakeholders represented here today are going to be critical. You've heard, I think, a preview of some of the testimony that we will present at committee hearings in Sacramento. As Assemblymember Cunningham indicated, he and I represent two of 120 statewide legislators. We are the only two who touch San Luis Obispo County. And part of the presentation of the importance of this bill is not just for the health, safety, and economic vitality of San Luis Obispo County in the region, but really for the health, safety, and economic vitality of the entire state of California. That's the case that we will be making. I want, I want to acknowledge some of the partners here who aren't standing up with us, but from Cal Fire, from San Luis Fire, from Paso Robles Fire, from California Highway Patrol, the public safety component of this legislation cannot be understated. Uh, the future of the plant in its continued operation and then after its decommissioning and the continued uh, place at least as far as we know for the spent rods to be housed is going to be an ongoing public safety responsibility of this community, of this region, and indeed of the state of California.